All right, so we're going to go ahead and get started here looking at the Blackmagic camera app. Uh, first thing we want to do is go into our settings. You press the settings in the bottom right hand corner. And now you have your main menu options here on the left. And you have each of the sub menu options here on the right. So we're going to look at record uh, in the top left. And then we've got at the very top, we've got codec. What we are going to do is you may not have this many options. Uh, you can either put this on H.265 or H.264. We do most things in H.264. Uh, so I would say you're gonna be better off if you just go ahead and do H.264. And then we're gonna hit the back arrow. Uh, the next thing you've got here is gonna be your resolution and you can put this on whatever you wanna record on. I recommend you go ahead and shoot in 4K because that will give you more options when you are actually editing. Uh, the next thing is your color space. You're gonna leave that on Rec. 709. Uh, some of yours will say Rec. 2020 HDR, and some of yours will have a couple of other options. As you see here, I have Apple Log HDR, which is actually a, uh, a really good thing if you plan on using this footage professionally but we're not gonna deal with that for now. Leave it in Rec. 709. That is the way you will be most familiar uh, with looking at it. You've got other things that you can look at here. If you've got multiple uh, phones recording all at the same time, if you go into the time code display, you can actually set it to time of day, which will then allow you to synchronize all of the devices together uh, because they're all based on internet time and so they should all be hitting at exactly the same time, which makes it easy if you're gonna shoot with multiple cameras to then go and edit those things together. You're gonna to only be using one camera for this, so I wouldn't worry about shooting uh, in that. Just leave it on record run. That allows you to see how long each of your clips are. Next thing we're gonna do is go down to camera. Uh, you'll notice my enable vertical video is not turned on. Uh, I don't shoot vertical video a a lot I'm doing more lately, but uh, for the most part, we won't shoot vertical video. This project will not be in vertical, so you're gonna wanna make sure that you leave it uh, turned off there. And then if you uh, go down to where it says shutter measurement, that's gonna be defaulted to speed. I'm gonna encourage you to switch that over to angle, and we'll talk about that in just a minute. Uh, next thing, if you just kinda scroll down here, you can see uh, that you can lock the current orientation. That means that it will always stay uh, shooting in landscape or widescreen. Uh, I'm, again, I'm not shooting in vertical, so it doesn't really matter to me. So uh, it's up to you. I, I would go ahead maybe and lock that orientation, but just remember you did that if you need to go back and change anything. Here we have audio uh, options. The top one is gonna be where you select your audio source. Uh, it will always have the iPhone microphone as a source. If you plug in another microphone, that will show up. Uh, it shows up in different ways uh, depending on what device you're using and what uh, cable you're using. And in uh, the case I'm recording on a mic into a separate device, uh, it shows up as wireless RX. Um, so it's a, a whole different thing. You just need to know what you are trying to get audio from. Um, everything else on the audio side of things is good. Uh, I don't wouldn't really bother with that too much. You've got a uh, monitor. You can turn on focus assist, which is really only gonna help you uh, if you're working outside of the app. But um, we'll, we'll leave everything in there alone. And really all the other options there are good where they are. So now, uh, if you come up, you've got chat over here on the right side. You have to have a Blackmagic account to do this, which you can do a free account. Uh, I'm not encouraging you to do that. I'm just telling you that it's an option. Above that, you've got media. This is where you're gonna go uh, to get all of your clips. These are just some clips I got uh, during some recent flooding during Helene. Uh, and then if you go all the way up to the right, which while we're here in the, uh, the media, if you want to select your clips, you're going to choose the uh, option that is, let's see, it's going to be the little 
images with the little check mark on it. You're going to choose that and then you can choose which of these things you actually want to save and work with. And then you're going to hit the upload button, the little rectangle with a arrow up. And then you're going to tell it where you want it to go so you could save four videos and then that will go into your camera roll i'm not doing that right now now let's go back into camera and we're going to look at this uh, if you tap just anywhere on the screen it is going to uh focus right there you can see right there it's got the ae auto exposure slash af auto focus that is turned on it's kind of hard to read some of the options that are up there. Uh, there we go. That's going to be a little bit better so we can see those. Uh, we're going to start in the top left. That's going to be your lens. And these are all going to be different depending on what kind of uh, phone you are using. Uh, first off, we have our 13 millimeter 0.5. Uh, you're all familiar with the 0.5. That is not something you're going to use a lot. It is something you might use uh, if you want to create like an effect where you have some sort of distorted image in it, but that is an option there. Below that, I've got the 24 millimeter uh, 1X. That is gonna be the best lens on your camera. You can use that for almost everything that you will shoot when it comes to doing a horror film uh, or a creative, creative video, a news video, it doesn't really matter. It's all pretty much gonna be the same. Below that, I've got the 48 millimeter uh, which is basically just double the 24 there. And then below that, if some of you will have the, uh, I forget, it's probably times three there. I've got uh, times five. And there was a bird over here a minute ago. Um, looks like he is gone. Or I would have gotten a, a shot of it. So you can see how close he is. Uh, but here we are. We are looking at our... Uh, different lens options and everything. I'm going to go back to the 24 because, again, that's the main lens that we're going to be using. Uh, at the top left, we move from lens. We're going to move over to FPS. That is our frame rate. Uh, I have my frame rate set to 24 FPS, 24 frames per second. That means we're recording 24 single pictures every second of video. And then when we are editing, we are playing those back at 24 frames per second. And that's what gives us the illusion, illusion of motion. Really, you're just doing a bunch of still pictures and then playing them in rapid succession. And that's what makes it look like we have motion. But you'll notice when I'm there, uh, when I tap into any of the menu options, something pops up on the right side of the screen. We have our... Uh, wheel over here that I can scroll up and down. I'm at 23.98. This will go all the way up to 30 in 4K. If I had it in 1080 or HD, I could do 60 frames per second. I'm not really looking to do that though, so I'm going to put mine back to 24. Whoop, it moves to 25. 25 is not what we use in the United States, and I'm having a hard time. There we go. Uh, that is something that they're going to use in Europe and Japan. Uh, it's an entirely different format for editing, but um, it's just a frame difference, essentially. All right, if we come back out of our FPS, uh, we now have shutter. Now, you'll notice that my shutter says 180 degrees. Earlier, I told you to switch from shutter speed to shutter angle. This is shutter angle, and it is really the way that film is traditionally shot. Uh, you'll notice that in film, there's gonna be a little bit of motion blur. You want a little bit of motion blur so things feel natural. Uh, if you want that, you're gonna shoot at 180 degrees on your shutter. If you tap onto shutter though, you can adjust it. You could take it the other direction. We're down at 1.1 now. Uh, and that is, <laughs> It's really hard to see, but that is there. It's obviously made the image a lot darker. And then on the other side of 180, we've got 360, and you can see that that has made the image a lot brighter, but the motion is gonna be best at 180. So we're just gonna click on 180. And if you'll notice now up in the top right, up above where it says 180, 
uh, to the left of the record button, there is actually up above it a uh, lock. I just clicked on it, it just turned blue. That is going to lock my shutter at 180. If you are not sure, if you're not confident um, in controlling your shutter, uh, I recommend that you leave that off. And what that will do is when you tap on the screen, the, the thing is gonna adjust on its own. You see now my shutter is at 216. That's what it did to try and compensate for the brightness of the background. I'm gonna go back in there though, and I'm gonna set it back to 180 uh, because that's what I want mine to be at. Uh, and then I'm just gonna hit lock and there we go. Now to get the menus off of the right side, I'm just gonna tap back on the shutter up at the top. And now that's going away. Now you'll notice that if I tap now, it's only doing AF, which is autofocus. That means that the auto exposure, the exposure has now been controlled by the shutter. I have given myself complete control over that. And so it's not going to change the brightness. I can tap wherever I want to and it will focus in that area, but the brightness of the image is not going to change. Moving over, uh, we actually have a control here that we can't change, and that is the iris. Uh, mine is at f1.8, that is an f-stop. It's not anything we can do uh, on an iPhone. With good lenses, you can control the iris. The iris is uh, the opening at the back of the lens that allows light into the camera. That is fixed on an iPhone lens, so you can't change that. But on a professional lens, you would be able to go in and actually adjust the iris uh, to let more light or less light, depending on what you were trying to do. The four zero zeros there in the middle of the uh, top of the screen are gonna be our time code. Those are gonna be uh, when we hit record and I'll just hit the record button here you will see that those are going to start counting up. And that is our time code. Right now we're at five, whatever, it's moving you know, pretty quickly. So that is our time code. Next to that, we have our ISO. ISO is the digital enhancement of the light. So uh, you want that number to be as low as it can be and your image still look good. So you'll see right now, I can take it down to 55, it looks a little dark. I can take it up to 100, 125, we're good. But the higher I go, I don't know if you could tell, obviously the image is overexposed, but it has picked up a lot of grain. There's a lot of digital distortion on the image. The higher your ISO, the more distortion you're going to have. I really, uh, I think on the iPhone 15, they say you can go up to about 1250 uh, and it looks okay. You're probably going to want to keep it significantly below that if you can. So uh, if you need more light, add more light. Don't change the light setting uh, on your phone because if you do, you may end up with an image that doesn't look as good as you think it does. So. Uh, I've got my ISO. Now it is connected to shutter in that when I lock the shutter, I'm locking the ISO to a manual setting so I can go in and I can adjust that. So let's just look down and see. And yeah, I feel like that's way overexposed. So I'm gonna keep tapping there on the ISO and I'm gonna drag that down and I'm gonna say, oh, okay, that looks good to me. Now we're just kind of eyeballing this. You can tell if something is way overexposed or way underexposed. Overexposed, the bright parts of the image are unusable. Underexposed, the dark parts of the image are unusable. You want to be in a happy medium uh, and you always want to make sure you have more light than you think you need because you can make it a little bit darker in editing but you never want to have too much light because then you'll completely ruin your image. So you got to kind of fill it out, make sure it looks the way that you want it to look. All right, next I'm going over to white balance. White balance is when you tell the camera, hey, this is white. And when it figures out what color white is, it can then figure out all the other colors. Just a, a tip here, if you're shooting something professionally, you need to know how to use this. Uh, if you are not shooting something professionally, 
you may be okay using auto. So it's up to you, but if you turn off auto, you can now adjust your white balance. You'll notice when I do this that the image down at 2500 uh, looks very cool. And that's because uh, it should actually be warm right now, but the color temperature of the light outside is causing it to not look warm. Typically your lower numbers, 2500 is especially low. Most things only go down to about 3200. That is going to generally create kind of an orangish hue um, or what we call CTO, color temperature orange uh, on your image. Obviously in this case, it did the exact opposite because it was adjusting for the light. Let me see what happens when I hit the sun. So when I hit the sun icon there, it did a pretty good job. Uh, and brought that to 56K. That's because in order for your image to look good, it needs to match the color temperature of the lighting outside. I have some lamps on around me, which are actually lower uh, on color temperature, but the sun is making this 56. So if I were to go up closer to the top end of this, it gets a lot more orange. If I go to the bottom, it gets a lot more blue and it's just the opposite of what it's supposed to be. So you'll really need to play around with that. Uh, white balance is kind of a, a tricky thing to figure out. So I'm just gonna go back up there and hit auto and let it adjust. And if I think that looks good, I'm now going to hit lock and it is going to keep that white balance. So nothing is going to change in terms of the color temperature uh, of this image. I will say though, uh, I'm going to turn that off because I think this is a little, a little orange. So let me go up more. Ooh, let's go the other way. I would say right around there is probably a better representation of what I'm actually seeing with my eyes. So now I'm going to lock it and I think that will look uh, the way that I want it to look. So that's a quick look at the interface of the, the menu options at the top. One more thing I want to talk about, and then y'all should be good to go, should be able to shoot a movie, is directly below the record button, there is a thing called stabilization. Uh, I am shooting on a gimbal, so I could turn mine off, and it's going to be pretty good. You can kind of see when I'm moving how there's a little bit of a bounce to it. Uh, I would probably leave it on standard most of the time. If you do not have a gimbal, and most of you will not, you can use cinematic, and that is going to somehow digitally stabilize your video so that it looks pretty smooth. You can even use extreme, but I would be very careful uh, if you decide to use extreme because it can uh, cause a delay in what you are seeing. So you want to be careful with that. But when you're done with it, if you want to turn that off, just tap the blue stabilization button over there. It's going to go away. I'm going to put mine back on standard and then turn that off. All right. Well, this is a uh, crash course in how to use the black magic camera app. Uh, we'll go over some of the other settings later. I hope this has been helpful. Please let me know if you have questions.